Hello, welcome to Neoscribe. Despite having 130 million subscribers worldwide, Netflix is in constant competition for subscribers' attention. The company found that the chances of users leaving the platform rises substantially after 90 seconds of searching for something to watch. This is why they invest heavily on optimizing their personalized recommendation system, which allows users to quickly and easily find content that they enjoy. The recommendation system has always been a critical part of the company's success. When Netflix started to grow quickly in 1999, the company was dropping a lot of money on DVDs in order to keep up with the demand. Naturally, it was hard to keep new releases available, so the recommendation system was used to steer customers towards older titles until new releases became available. And this was a very complicated undertaking as Netflix engineers had to create algorithms to predict what titles would be appealing to individual users. This involved accounting for how users rated titles, along with simple attributes like genre, actors, and directors. On top of that, the system had to account for how new a title was and how many copies were in stock. Eventually, the company had to bring in mathematicians to help with the creation of the original system called Cinematch. And the system worked pretty well as its predictions were accurate within a half star 75% of the time. Then, in 2006, Blockbuster released their Total Access program, which made them an almost unstoppable force. You see, the Total Access program allowed subscribers to rent DVDs online, but instead of mailing them back, they received a new movie for free when they returned it at a Blockbuster store. Then once movies were returned, Blockbuster mailed out the next movie on the list. So Netflix had to pull out all the stops in order to compete with Blockbuster, and that meant making the user experience as good as possible. And Cinematch was a big part of the push, and Netflix CEO Reed Hastings was obsessed with improving the system. He even spent one Christmas vacation glued to his laptop working on algorithms. This obsession led to the Netflix Prize, an open competition for the best algorithm to predict user ratings for films. Netflix would award $1 million to the first person or team to create an algorithm that would improve Cinematch performance by 10%. The competition brought a massive turnout involving 40,000 teams from 186 countries, including the incredibly talented Belcour's Pragmatic Chaos, which had statisticians from AT&T labs specialized in predicting human behavior. For the next three years, the team dove deep into many psychological factors, such as whether subscribers rated differently on weekends versus weekdays, if the rating tendency changed over time, or if they rated differently depending on their mood. Finally, in 2009, they beat Netflix Cinematch performance by 10.06%, winning the million dollar prize. But before Netflix could implement the prize winning algorithm, they shifted focus towards their streaming service, which would change the recommendation system's algorithms drastically. You see, the streaming service allows Netflix to gather input on user behavior in real time. They can see exactly how people browse the platform, how long they watch a title, how often, if they skip scenes, and on and on. This feedback is way more valuable than a 5-star rating system. So since Netflix launched its streaming service in 2007, the company invested heavily in improving on the recommendation system. And that investment has paid off since 80% of the content that people watch on Netflix today is discovered through the recommendation system. And the system involves two areas of input. First are vast amounts of data from user activity to the finest detail including what users watch, for how long, the shows that are abandoned, and so on. And the second area of input is an extensive metadata catalog of all the content on Netflix. This data is meticulously established by a team of around 30 taggers along with freelance staff. The team as a whole watches every second of content on Netflix, tagging each film and episode with metadata. One Netflix tagger described the process as working with a sprawling palette of tones and storylines to capture the spirit of the content. Tags can range from things like mutants, witches, and zombies, all the way to technology gone wrong, alternate futures, and forbidden love. Finally, the behavior and content metadata are ran through machine learning algorithms, and then users with the same viewing behavior are grouped together. And Netflix calls these groups taste communities, and every user fits into multiple taste communities that number in the thousands. And that influences the placement of every row and title that users see on the interface. The most strongly recommended rows start at the top, and then within each row, the most strongly recommended titles start on the left. 
and Netflix is continually retraining their algorithms based on every visit of each user to improve accuracy. And the company has taken their algorithms to new heights over the past few years with the addition of Aesthetic Visual Analysis, or AVA. You see, Netflix conducted consumer research studies and found that the visual artwork of the titles catches 82% of the user's attention, and it's the biggest influence on decisions to watch a title. And they found that users spent only an average of 1.8 seconds considering each title. So AVA is critical to the overall experience on the Netflix platform. AVA is a highly complex collection of tools and algorithms designed to extract high quality imagery from the videos. And the extracted images are used to display what users see on the interface. It accounts for many factors such as identifying actors, focal point, object detection, and text placement just to name a few. On top of that, there are many variations of title images, as illustrated here with samples from Stranger Things. You can see how certain users might be shown the image of Nancy Wheeler and Jonathan Byers if they had a viewing history of romantic titles, while others might be shown any of the top three images if they have a strong viewing history of horror. I can't believe it's been over 20 years since Netflix founding, and they've come so far. They started out using Cinematch to steer its subscribers towards older titles to save on inventory costs. And now they've turned their entire platform into one big recommendation system, down to the smallest detail that's fully unique to each user. And at the center of it all is algorithms. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey.